Hello and welcome back to another Technology Guru video. So today I'm gonna to take you through a full tutorial of showing you how to live stream using OBS or Open Broadcaster software, whether you want to stream to Twitch or to YouTube. I've got some old tutorials on this, um, but uh, OBS has released a new software which is now called OBS Studio. So we're gonna do a full tutorial on how you can go from start to finish, how to set up your live stream. A uh, few things you're going to need. First, you're going to need to download OBS. So go to obsproject.com or just Google OBS uh, within Google, and that will bring up the OBS Project website. Once you're there, you're going to want to download the version that you need for your operating system. So if you're using a Windows machine, download this one here, a Mac and a Linux and so forth. Uh, once you've downloaded OBS, you're definitely going to need some sort of microphone and webcam. Uh, microphones, cheap ones I recommend are Blue Yetis, anything from the blue series of microphones or audio technica is great uh, and then you're going to need some type of webcam i use the logitech c922x which is uh, 4k or 1080p capable uh, definitely check that one out all the links will be down below if you're wanting to check out that hardware now once you've downloaded obs studio you want to go ahead and open up OBS. So I'm going to go ahead and open up OBS now, and I'm actually going to make it full screen. This is a little overkill as far as full screen goes, because again, you're probably going to be looking at this on an alternative monitor when you set it up. But just for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to show you from the ground up how to set up OBS. Now, when you open it up, none of this is going to be here. All you're going to see is a blank space. You're not going to see anything. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and set up your first scene. So what is a scene? A scene is what you see here. You can see my desktop behind me. You can see me here in the webcam. You can see my microphone. All of this is a scene. Now, when you start and open a video game, that is going to be a part of your scene as well. But you need to go ahead and get the settings, you know, configured first, and then you can start streaming within OBS. First thing you need to do, go down here where you see the scenes tab right here and click the addition symbol. It's going to say add a scene. We're going to go ahead and call it scene two. You can name that whatever you want to name it. Now, when you create a new scene, you're going to see this just just black is all you're going to see. So now once you have a scene created, you need to go ahead and add sources. So now what we're going to want to do is click the addition symbol here underneath sources to add our first source. Now, the first source that I always like to add is my video capture device. Now, the video capture device is going to be your webcam. Now, I already have one set up as my webcam, but we'll go ahead and create a new one. Uh, so go ahead and give it a name and then go ahead and click OK. Now, once we do that, it's then going to ask us what device do we want to use as our video input. Now, the first thing you need to do is under device, go ahead and click that drop down menu and select your webcam. If it's a USB cam, it should already come up automatically if it's plugged in and you have all the appropriate drivers. Now, there's a bunch of different stuff that you can do here. You can flip it vertically, but for simplicity's sake, Guys, just leave it like it is. Don't mess with any of these settings until you realize later that you need to do that. You can also go to configure video here and you can actually go into your webcam settings, but we're not gonna do any of that today. Go ahead and click okay. And the last thing I wanna show you here is that when you're adding this, if you've already added your webcam, you can only do it once per webcam. So under add existing, click that box there, select the webcam, and then go ahead and click okay. Now, as you can see at the top of the screen here, you're going to be able to see the webcam. Now, I can move this around like I'm using Photoshop. It's almost like its own layer. Um, so I can click and hold with my mouse and drag this wherever I want to drag it. Now, a lot of people have different scenes, like you may have scene one, which is called full scene or full webcam where basically you drag your webcam out and it's full, you know, it's full screen like that. That's a little much for me right now. So we're going to drag it down to the lower left, which is, you know, where you might want to drag it within your scene. Now, once you've added your video capture device, you then want to go and change the settings and go ahead and start setting up your audio for your microphone. I'm doing this in the steps that I would normally do when I'm setting up my OBS to stream or to live stream. Now, go ahead and over in the right hand corner, you're going to see something here that says settings. Now, if we go to settings, click on settings, we're going to see a few different things. I'm going to walk you through all of these step by step. Now, under general, there's really not much that I change here. I leave all of this the same. A lot of this is basically aesthetic stuff that basically changes the way OBS looks or the way you uh, experience their user interface. So I'm really not going to change anything here. 
the, the, the main thing here is going to be under stream. Now, under stream, you've got stream type. So it's going to be a streaming service. Now, custom streaming server, we're not going to cover that in today's video. If that's something you want, I'll do a video later on that. Put that in the comments if that's something you're interested in. Under service. Now, you may be streaming on Twitch. You may be streaming on YouTube or YouTube gaming. Whatever service you're using, you're going to have a coinciding stream key. If you don't know how to find your Twitch or YouTube stream key, I will have the two videos that I've done showing you how to find those specific stream keys in the description of this video. You've got to log into YouTube, log into Twitch, navigate to your information for your account, get the stream key, paste it here where it says stream key. Once you've done that, you need to go down, always click the apply button in the bottom right hand corner when you've made and completed all of the changes that you want to make to set up your OBS. So once I've clicked apply, I'm done. You've got it set up, you've got Twitch, you've got your stream key, it's the correct stream key here, and never show this to anybody. I mean, obvious why you wouldn't wanna do that. Now, once you have all of this set up, let's go to output. Now, under output, um, I always change my output mode to advanced. Now, under advanced, it allows me to uh, control a few different things. Now. Not only can you stream with OBS, but you can also record. Now, I don't really prefer the recording options in OBS, but it is free. And if that's something you want to do, you can definitely record within OBS. Now, we have our streaming and recording here. We're going to go ahead and click the tab here that says streaming. And then below this, we're going to see a few different things. Now, the encoder, I leave it X24. I wouldn't change that. Um, again, this is more for recording purposes. And then the rescale output, you can always change this to be what you want it to be. I leave mine at 1920 by 1080 because I like to stream in 1080p. Uh, so even if you have a larger 4K monitor, you can rescale it to be 1080p, which is you know changing this here. Now, if your internet connection is not that great, you may want to rescale this to be 720 or something like that. That way your stream doesn't chug or lag or you get some things like that. Um, under rate control, uh, the bit rate here, again, all of this is going to, to determine the, you know, really going to be determined by the internet speeds at your house, the type of machine you have. Uh, I recommend leaving it at 2,500 or 2 to 2,500, 2,000 to 2,500 to kind of see where you're at. And then if you see your stream is struggling or it's handling it very well, then you can increase or dec decrease this number dependent on the type of stream that, you know, the type of, I guess you would say setup that you have. Now, once you've made all of the, the different changes here go ahead and click apply right here at the bottom right hand corner and then let's go over to the most important thing I really think audio for me is one of the most important things about a stream now leave your sample rate at 41 44.1 you want your channels to be set to stereo now here's where it gets interesting the desktop audio device now mine is going to be set up as the speakers because this is how I have my setup you know going in but normally you may have this set up to default like if you have your computer plugged into like your speakers plugged into your headphone jack just leave it as default if you leave it as default you can never go wrong there but you may have to come in and adjust this the desktop audio device is going to be how your stream audience hears the audio coming from your computer so the music that you play the game sounds all of this is coming from the desktop audio device so click this drop down menu select the one that's appropriate for you and then go from there Leave the one here, device two is disabled for now. Underneath mic and auxiliary audio device, this is your main microphone. This is this guy here. Whatever you're speaking into, whether it be your Blue Yeti, your high LPR 40, whatever it is, that's going to be here. Now, for me personally, I have an audio interface that's going into my computer. So underneath microphone, my XLR mic microphone is plugged in to my Scarlett 2i2 solo USB audio interface. So for me, I'm going to select my audio interface. But for you, you may you know see Blue Yeti or whatever microphone you're using. If it's a USB, it will automatically come up here. You want to make sure all of that is set the way that you want it to set. Now, don't change anything else. Click Apply. Now, once we're done with that, go to video. So here's the deal. Your base canvas resolution is going to be the size of your display. So for me, I have an Asus uh, PQ27. Uh, the, the, the native resolution for that is 2560 by 1440. So it's about 2K. Um, but I want to output, I want to scale it down to be 1080p. I don't want to be streaming in 4K. What's the purpose of that? Not many people's going to be able to experience that. And I would highly recommend going down to 1080p uh, to be the minimum uh, or the maximum. And then if you even need to go down beyond that, 720p is okay, depending on your internet size. So again, the canvas is your display size. The scale resolution is what the audience is going to see.
So all of that's done within video. Now we could get into like hotkeys. We could get into advanced. Now, basically with hotkeys, like if you want to start streaming, if you know, it's really easy to just click the start streaming button. But if you want that to be set up as a like a basically a, a hotkey on your keyboard, you can do that again. Add all of this at your leisure if you want to. Uh, and then under advanced, we're gonna see a few different things. I don't really change anything here because again, all of this is set up to just work. So I wouldn't change anything here and then go ahead and click okay. Now, once you have all of that set up, you then go back to your sources and start creating your scene once again. Now, the next source that I like to add is called a display capture. So if you go up here, go to add and then go to display capture, it's going to allow us to, uh, to capture our desktop. So for me, I have mine set up as screen capture here, but you go to create new here and then click okay. And that's basically going to allow you to record your display. So I've got multiple displays. I'm going to go ahead and choose the one here, the one that's over on my left hand side and then click okay. Now, as you can see, this covered up my webcam. Now, sources work very similar to layers in Photoshop. If we go to our sources panel, click and hold, drag that below the webcam, there I am. The webcam is always gonna be on top because that's obviously what you're going to want to be on top of your desktop. So once you've got the settings adjusted, audio, video, display capture, all of that's good there. Normally games can just work within display capture. So if I go over here and I go ahead and launch a game. So if I go ahead and launch, uh, launch my battle.net launcher, and then I go and open up a game within the battle.net launcher, then if say if I open up Hearthstone, uh, basically it will open up on top of the display and it will show me. So if I go here, go to Hearthstone and click play, uh, if it opens up properly, which it should, then we're going to be able to play Hearthstone here and you can see the game. So here's the game. Here's my face. We've already got that done with display capture. Now you may have to, depending on the game, you may have to click add here and then go to a uh, game capture. Now some, some games, depending on if they go full screen or whatever, it's, it's, it's a little weird. You may have to capture the game with game capture, but for the most part, you can do display capture. I like doing display capture because it gives you a little more control uh, as the person in charge of the stream. So as you can see here now, anything that I do over here on my, my other monitor with my, with my game, I'm going to be able to see here on top of the, the live stream, just like you see here. So that's kind of how that works. Now let's talk about a couple of other things that you may want to add to your scene to kind of give it a little more pizzazz, right? Um, so basically a lot of people ask me, how do I set up like the Twitch alerts, things like that? I've got a tutorial on how to do that, but that's all gonna be done through something called the browser source. So through the browser source, you click that there. Uh, and then as you can see mine here, at existing will be alerts right here. And then basically the alerts, it allows you to capture, you log in the Twitch alerts or Streamlabs, whatever you're using, and then type in the URL, that's going to capture it. That way whenever someone subs to you or follows you, you're gonna see a really cool little image and audio cue come up showing that they've followed you. We've all, we all know what that looks like. That's going to be done through browser source. Now, the next thing you may want to do is add an image. You may want to add like a webcam border or something like that. Uh, you know, I don't really have any on here right now, but uh, if I wanted to, I could search my computer for a webcam border, do that and then input that onto the stream. So that's how you do images again, you could download a simple webcam border, put it on your desktop, put it around your webcam and do it that way. So uh, once you've got done there with image, you can also do text. So if we go add there and then go to text, you can add some really cool text. Now, normally I do all of my text through uh, browser sources, uh, through like Streamlabs and things like that. But if you wanna do it through OBS, you can just kind of click here, go to create new, and then any text that you want, you would basically just type in the text box here. So let's say we type in hello, just like that there. Then you're gonna be able to click okay. And uh, you can see up here in the left-hand corner, the word hello. Again, you can play around with this, work uh, work with it like you would with text in say Photoshop. I'm, I know I'm kind of correlating those two, but it's very similar to, to working with layers within the Adobe suite of software. So again, you can do text here just like that. Now. Working with different sources within a scene is very simple. Like I said, you can drag, uh, click and drag to, to basically take a scene and put it either on the top or on the bottom. Uh, and also if you want to remove a scene, it's as simple as clicking the scene, right clicking it, and then going over to where you see something that says remove. Click remove like that there. Now it'll say, are you sure you want to remove it? Click yes, and then that specific scene will be removed. So we'll go ahead and remove the text as well. Uh, and the other different types of sources that you can add to your, to your stream 
same through OBS uh, are things like audio input, but you've already done all of that, so no need to do any of that. Uh, again, you do all of the alert stuff through browser source or media source directly here within OBS. Uh, there's some great tutorials on how to set that up. But once you have your scene the way that you want it, so say I've got my scene set up here, scene one, the way that I want it, and you're ready to stream, make sure that your mic right here, you see where the green is going left to right, make sure that it's picking up audio from your mic, and then also make sure that your desktop audio is picking up as well. Now, I have everything muted because I'm recording this video, but you should see green lines going into the yellow up here right here to the green and yellow between 25 and 15. The audio from your mic should be around here and your desktop audio, I like to keep a little lower than that, say around maybe 50 to 35 around here. That way you know they can hear your desktop audio and they can hear your microphone before you even start streaming. Now, once you're ready to stream, basically all you have to do is click the start streaming button underneath controls. So underneath start streaming, boom, you do that there. If you want to start recording, you can do that over here as well. Now, studio mode is going to show you, like, if you have two different scenes, so let's go ahead and say scene two is over here, scene one is over here. If you want to do that, you can look and see, hey, I want to fade between scene one and scene two. You can even set up hotkeys to do that if that's what you want to do. Uh, but basically, that allows you to transition from one scene to another seamlessly through studio mode. Click on it one more time, and that removes it just like that. Up here in the settings, you're going to see a bunch of different things like scene collection, tools, uh, profiles, things like that. Again, all of it can be done down here within the scenes and the sources. I encourage you to tinker around with it, play around with it, get what fits you. Don't necessarily copy what all the popular streamers do. Make your own scene, make your own stream look unique to you. If you've got any questions on how to do anything else within OBS Studio, please put those in the comments section below. I know this has been a very in-depth tutorial, but that's what I do here on this channel. I want to make technology easy for you easy for your mom, easy for anyone. Thank you guys for watching another one of my videos, and I will see you guys next time.